tonight, choosing convenience over quality. I'm sure we've all got a radiation glow around us from our microwave because it's used so much, but it's on all the time. And could cooking from scratch save you some dough? They came in at about £5.80. For four meals? Support. Under six quid for four fresh yep. meals. Incredible. Good evening and welcome to the Tonight programme. We Brits spend a billion pounds a year on kitchen equipment, yet evidence suggests we're actually cooking from scratch less. In the first of four special programmes exploring the world of food, Jonathan Maitland discovers why more of us can't or won't cook. In Britain, more than 20 million of us spend our evenings in front of the telly. And there's one type of show that really whets our appetite. I like it. Whether it's presenter travelogues or culinary competitions, millions of us love to gorge on a daily diet of cookery shows. But for some experts, this fascination with TV food has come at a price. Eight million people watch the final of the Great British Bake Off. We're absolutely obsessed by food. We just somehow don't want to cook it ourselves. The proliferation of TV cooking programs, especially since the 1990s, have made people even more disengaged from cooking. They feel, I can't do this. Given the number of cookery shows on the box these days, you would think that we spend most of our time in the kitchen rustling up delicious home-cooked pies, cakes and stews or whatever. But the fact is, only one in six of us cook from scratch every night. So the question is, why do the rest of us spend so much time slouched in front of the TV with a ready meal or a takeaway or whatever, when we could be whipping up something really interesting in the kitchen instead? Well, there seems to be three key arguments why this is the case. There's cost, you have to spend more money to buy raw ingredients. There's time, it takes too long to cook from scratch. But first, the big one, skills. Many of us just can't cook. Healthy eating and cooking from scratch might be the fundamentals of a healthy diet, but the skills and the knowledge to put that together day in, day out, is something that you have to be taught and shown how to do. Grandparents not cooking meant that parents never got to see how food is made, and now their children, we've got three generations of people that have no idea how to put a basic meal on the table, and that's a problem. And that's exactly what happened here at the Harris household in Kent. My mum wasn't one for a lot of home cooking or cooking from scratch, and it kind of phases me, it kind of scares me. My cooking skills are zinch. Mum Mia helps run her husband Matt's carpentry business, and they have three hungry young boys aged between 10 and 17. The meals eaten in this house are chicken nuggets. My children will only eat fries to go. Are you disappointed, boys, in my culinary skills? Yeah. What do you mean is it's not cooked very nice? No, sometimes it's burn and crunchy. Oh, my God. I'm sure we've all got a radiation glow around us from our microwave, because it's used so much, but it's on all the time. Mum can't cook that much, because probably she's never been taught, and she don't really do it around the house anyway. 13-year-old football man Zach may enjoy his diet of ready meals, but recently he's shown an interest in expanding his knowledge of food and learning a new set of skills, that is, cooking from scratch. Zach's a very, very energetic, energetic boy. He's just turned 13, and he actually is one in the house that has asked me pretty much nine times out of ten if he can cook. He would love to be able to cook. Well, we thought we'd try and help, so we've taken Zach, along with five other youngsters, to meet someone who believes they should already know how to prepare simple dinners. Top chef Aldo Zilli was taught to cook by his mother at the age of eight. He says it's a vital skill, and starting early is critical. Why do you think it's so important for young people to learn how to cook? 
I think uh, cooking is a way of life and it's crucially important when you grow up because if you can cook from scratch, you can go to markets, you can pass it on to your kids. I think it's a great skill to learn. Now you've got quite a challenge today, six kids, um, most of whom don't do that much cooking, if any, at home. How are you going to get them to kind of get the taste for it? You know, today what I'd like to achieve is for them to, for the, to take this away as a life lesson, not a cooking lesson. You know, this is a lesson for life. This is a lesson that they should learn because it happens every day. Okay, my beautiful young people, welcome to my kitchen where everything goes right. So we're gonna prep some vegetables, we're going to prep some fish, we're gonna do some cooking, and then finally, at the end, we're just gonna have a good time. You ready for that? Yeah. Yes. yes what? Yes, yes. That's what I like. Go for it. Today Aldo's going to show our kids how to make a healthy salmon and mixed vegetable meal right from scratch. But first he wants to see how familiar the kids are with the vegetables they'll be using. What vegetable am I cutting now? Um, it starts with a P. P? Yeah. No, it starts with an A, how about that? Can you pass me a courgette, please? In that box, okay? Courgette, please. Have you ever seen this before? Do you recognise this? Yeah. What vegetable is this? Yeah. Can you please get me a fennel from that box? It's right in front of you. It's right in... That is not a fennel, come on. That's a mushroom. All right, I'll get it. There you go. That's a fennel, okay? The kids are struggling to identify some of the vegetables, but cookery classes have never been compulsory in schools across England, so is it any wonder that some children grow up without basic cooking skills? We'll check back in with our kids shortly, but here in Middlesex, the charity Grub for Life run classes that teach families how to make good, simple meals from scratch. The course is run by Nigel Denby. Cooking from scratch is hugely important, but if you don't know how to boil an egg or to incorporate some vegetables into a quick pasta sauce, how on earth are your children going to get a balanced diet? In these classes, what we do is very simple. We all cook, we all contribute to preparing an element of a, of a dish. We talk about the food that we're, we're preparing and we sit down and eat it together. Do you remember all those vegetables you chopped up for us? At the end of it, our mission is simple. For that recipe to be taken home, cooked again and shared with the rest of the family. Well done. And those attending the course have seen some rewarding results. Good job, everyone. Right now we need to put it in the oven. As a parent, it makes me feel much better because then she's not one of them kids that are just eating chicken nuggets and chips. We're eating fresh, fresh vegetables and making it from scratch, so it makes you feel much better. Wow. This is very much uh, helpful to me to make uh, delicious food to my daughter. <laughs> By helping families to develop skills to cook healthy food, we've seen enormous changes. We've seen children eating their five a day without any problem. We've seen families develop uh, much healthier lifestyles. We've started to see families wanting to grow their own veg, getting more interested in taking exercise and doing things as a family, not just as individuals. Back at Aldo's class, his hands-on approach has captured the full attention of all the kids. Now it's time to cook something. So I've decided to cook fish for you today. So all I've got here is a little bit of um, a fish, a little bit of salmon. And it's fresh fish, so smell. Smell, smell, smell. Smell, smell. Fresh fish does not smell a fish. So the vegetables are going in this very, 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 very hot walk, walk. Okay, so we put the root vegetables in there first. Skin down. We're gonna cook, quickly cook this salmon fillet here. Well done, by the way, boys. So Donnie and Mohammed have grilled me some vegetables here. Well done, by the way. Thank you. You, are, you have been amazing. Your preparation today was second to none. Lovely vegetables, the fish, I've cooked it a little bit more than I would normally cook because salmon can be a little bit pink in the middle otherwise and that might put you off. Then I'm going to add some of these cooked vegetables here on top of that, on top of more vegetables. 
vegetables and vegetables and vegetables. In the oven, I've got some potatoes, and I've also got some more salmon. So we're all going to have a little bit of this each. Okay, this is extra virgin olive oil. We're going to finish things off with it. And this is a plate of health. This is what you should be eating more of, fish and vegetables. Yes? Yes. yes. What do you say? Yes. Yes. yes, chef. Let's go and eat. Come on. Can I just say something before I finish? I think that you guys have got potential. I am extremely proud that you carried on, didn't give up, and you did it all. So now all I want to see is clean plates while I just serve you the water. Buon appetito. So after just a couple of hours in the kitchen with Aldo, how do the kids feel now about cooking from scratch? I just want to hear what you thought of today in terms of a vote. So hands up who enjoyed Aldo's cookery lesson. Good. I think that's 100%. And hands up who is going to cook or try and get their mum and dad to cook a little bit more at home as a result of what we did today. Good. You're not just saying that. Yeah. You're not doing that to impress teacher, are you? Yeah. Do you really mean it? Yeah. Good. Well, that's a great result. But how does Aldo feel about the class? Well, you know, I'm sweating. Uh, it was uh, interesting, to say the least. Uh, I can't believe how many uh, of them didn't actually recognise vegetables. Uh, and also, I couldn't believe the fact that some of them never cooked before. And what would you like to see done to get kids cooking more and enjoying it more? You can't learn by just watching a demonstration. You have to get involved. Therefore, the country needs to get these kids involved. OK, our kids won't turn into Michelin-starred chefs overnight, but they have taken away some valuable basic skills. But, of course, the one thing you need if you're going to cook is time, and time is one thing a lot of you don't have, especially if you both work and you've got kids, in which case you can't really be blamed for using one of these. <laughs> Developed in the States and now introduced in Britain, a completely new approach to preparing and cooking meals. Back in the 60s, when many Brits first saw microwave ovens in restaurants, they were cutting-edge technology. And here's the real breakthrough. The oven uses radio waves at the frequencies used in radar. This reheats the meal in an incredibly short time. But it was in the 70s that the domestic microwave became hugely popular. It was the kitchen gadget that everyone wanted. Food manufacturers began making enticingly packaged meals that only needed reheating. Fast forward to today and the size of the British ready meal market is a colossal 3.8 billion pounds, the biggest in Europe. And one reason we love them so much is that they save us the one thing we could all do with a bit more of, time. Sihan Mohammed is a single mum with three boys all under nine. My life is hectic, it's very busy. I go to work, pick them up from school, I come back home and it's just chaos. I just want to do pre-packed meal that will take me a short time because time is really an issue for me. In this busy household, when it comes to cooking, convenience is everything. I feel guilty because I don't cook it from scratch and it's not healthy and I think we should have more vegetables. It's not that Seaham doesn't have the cooking skills, the problem is that it just takes too long to get the meals onto the table. They love jacket potatoes, hot dog, pizza, sometimes we go out. You did, didn't you? Yeah, I feel a, a lot under pressure. To see if we can relieve that pressure and prove to Seaham that a healthy meal from scratch can be made in a short amount of time, we asked Chef Sophie Wright to help. So with these, we're going to be making a sort of chana masala, because we've got a little bit of spice mix. Chana masala, yeah. chickpea curry, that's my favourite. That's my, that's my go-to dish in the curry house. This is so good for you. So good for you, loads of iron. When it comes to cooking from scratch, generally, can you understand why people can't be bothered? I can. I mean, I know, you know, time is a real issue for people and coming home at the end of a long day and the idea of sort of opening the fridge and looking at just a load of raw ingredients is sometimes a really daunting thing. Tomato puree. I buy it in a tube. Food shouldn't just be fuel. It should be something that we all sort of enjoy doing and spend time thinking about. But there are shortcuts, aren't there? You can yeah. 
there Take. are. So have a well-stocked fridge, so that means you know having a good shopping mm. list. Mm. You might be into sort of batch cooking, so you know if you're going to make a bolognese, make it for two nights rather than for one. And having a really good repertoire, so it might be like three or four recipes that you know how to cook, you don't need to open a recipe book for. So I'm going to buy some cherry tomatoes, and I want the nice sweet ones. Now you're going to be teaching a single mum with three kids to show her how to make That's stuff it. from scratch quickly. That's the idea. Um, what's your main challenge, do you think? Um, well, she's got three kids of different ages, so mm. I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge. But my main thing is not to create loads of washing up, and it's to get something on the table within half an hour. And we're done. Yeah. See ya. Have a nice day. Bye. The total amount of time that Brits spend cooking has halved over the last 30 years. Back in 1980, a meal took an average of 60 minutes to prepare. In 1990, this had gone down to 45 minutes, and by 2012, it had boiled down to only 34 minutes spent making our evening meals. Okay. Over at Seaham's flat, the spaghetti. cooking has begun, and Sophie is keen to find out how she can help. What do you normally cook on an e in an evening, then, just to sort of speed you up, you know? Oh, chocolate potatoes, uh, hot dogs. Yeah. Pre-cooked pizza. OK. So how long would that normally take you, then, on a, you know, would it take sort of 20 minutes, half an hour? Uh, 30 to 40 minutes. OK. Yeah. So that's including the cooking time, so... Or is that literally... You cooking in the takes kitchen? me longer. Yeah. yeah. One hour. Or yeah. sometimes even more. OK. Yeah. That's why I don't... That's why you don't yeah. do it. Because I... you want to get them fed by, yeah. what, 7 o'clock? Yeah, get them ready for bed. Yeah. OK. So hopefully we can beat your yeah. record. Yeah. <laughs> On the menu tonight, a tasty chicken tomato and cauliflower tray bake with spicy chickpeas. If you can pop that so in the colourful, oven, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful, yeah. But Sophie's challenge is to show Seaham that she can make a meal from scratch in under half an hour. Well-cooked food doesn't take a lot of time to prepare in most cases. A little salt. Yeah, just a tiny amount. Sometimes it might be a disaster. But actually, you learn much more by doing that and getting in the kitchen and experimenting. So we're going to add our chickpeas. We all live busy lives. We all have commitments outside the home. And again, it's unrealistic for most families to expect to sit down to dinner every day of the week. But try one day. Aim for a day at the weekend when the family sits together, eats a meal prepared from scratch, and actually talks to each other. It's taken Sophie and Seaham only 25 minutes to cook tonight's meal. Mm, that looks lovely. It's good, huh? Yeah. That's half the time Seaham usually takes. So, what's the verdict? Did you like it? I think you did. How much did you like it? I I think that's a good thing. Good boy. I hope that from today, seaham has got one recipe that she can add to her repertoire, that she can cook a meal from scratch within 30 minutes and have it on the table, and the kids are going to really enjoy eating it. Mmm, that's lovely, isn't it? And she can feel good about herself for cooking it. Yeah, it was lovely having Sophie here. I couldn't believe you could make a meal in 25 minutes, and it was absolutely tasty. They both loved it. I would definitely make the same meal next week. Yeah, I would. It was absolutely delicious. Seaham now has a new dish that she can cook for her family using raw ingredients. But this kind of variety seems to be something we're lacking in our diets. The average person has a repertoire of only four recipes that they can prepare themselves. Now, that wouldn't matter if all our diets were healthy to begin with, but the bad news comes when you look at the nation's favourite meals at home. The usual suspects are all here. Bacon, sausages, pizza, and savouries like pies and pasties. With the second most popular all-day option, ready meals, consumed over 1.6 billion times a year in the UK. Now, another key reason why fewer of us are cooking home meals with raw ingredients is cost. More than a third of people in the UK say cooking from scratch is too expensive. But is this really true? To put the theory to the test, we asked the team at Healthy Food magazine to help us investigate. Why are you so pro cooking from scratch? One of the reasons is cost, another is health, and flavour is the most important one. Yeah, and cost is what we're going to be doing today. That's so right. just, just, yep. just very 
simply tell me what the aim of today's experiment is. Well, we just want to show how simple, easy and cost effective it is. Once you've got a few stock with basics, just to whip up something quick and easy that will rival any ready mill you could buy. Because there's kind of a perception that, isn't there, that buying a ready-made meal is somehow cheaper. People think that, but I think they'll be quite surprised. And also, when you see the quality of food you get for your money when you're cooking from scratch versus a ready meal, you'd be very, very surprised. I shall see you in a few minutes. All right. Hey. The meal that Phil has chosen to compare prices on is tandoori chicken with rice. The raw ingredients include peas, lime juice and baby spinach. At the same time as Phil prepares all that, he pops four equivalent ready meals into the microwave. 20 minutes after he started cooking and heating, there's eight meals on the table, enough for two families of four. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. There's no comparison. Good. Zingy, fresh and gorgeous. I give yours nine out of ten. It's great. I give that seven. I mean, it's OK. But the main thing is cost. How much did those four cost together that you bought fresh on your own individually and how much did those four shop-bought meals cost altogether? OK, so using all your kitchen ingredients like your spices and all your basic supermarket ingredients, they came in at about £5.80. Right, for four meals? For four, yep, not bad at all. Including the chicken? Including the chicken. Under six quid for four fresh yep. meals. OK, which mm -hmm. is incredible. Um, and how much for the shop-bought stuff? So these were on offer, mm -hmm. they were two for six pounds, so you're looking at 12 pounds for the family four. So let's remind ourselves of the cost here. Phil's fresh curry saved six pounds 20 for an evening meal for a family of four. And let's say that a family of four eats ready meals four times a week. If they replaced the ready meals with fresh ones, they could save 24 pounds 80 over just one week. Multiply that over a year, and you're looking at a rather healthy saving of £1,289.60. So, we've looked at the three biggest reasons why people are reluctant to cook from scratch. Lack of skills, lack of time, and the cost factor. But maybe cooking at home is set to increase, because last year the government agreed the school food plan. Set to launch next month, one of its main objectives is to make cookery lessons compulsory for all 10 to 14 year olds. That's great because it's going to start to educate people about the basic cooking skills, what they need to do to feed themselves practically on an everyday basis. Once you know how to boil an egg, you can't unlearn that. It's a skill that stays with you for life. So, everyone agrees it's a step in the right direction for a healthier Britain. Indeed, our children's futures may depend on it. If you'd like any more information on tonight's programme, please visit our website at itv.com slash tonight. In the meantime, though, good evening and thanks for watching. Coming up on Thursday, Superfoods, Fact or Fiction. Tonight investigates the hype behind so-called miracle foods. 13 of the UK's biggest charities want your help to erase the suffering in Gaza. Call 0370 60 60 900 or visit the DEC website to make a donation. Next tonight, can Ken and Deirdre save their weekend away? We are back in Coronation Street. Tonight, choosing convenience over quality. I'm sure we've all got a radiation glow around us from our microwave because it's used so much, but it's on all the time. And could cooking from scratch save you some dough? They came in at about £5.80. For four meals? For four. Under six quid for four fresh yep. meals. Incredible. Good evening and welcome to the Tonight programme. We Brits spend a billion pounds a year on kitchen equipment, yet evidence suggests we're actually cooking from scratch less. In the first of four special programmes exploring the world of food, Jonathan Maitland discovers why more of us can't or won't cook.
In Britain, more than 20 million of us spend our evenings in front of the telly. And there's one type of show that really whets our appetite. I like it. Whether it's presenter travelogues or culinary competitions, millions of us love to gorge on a daily diet of cookery shows. But for some experts, this fascination with TV food has come at a price. Eight million people watched the final of The Great British Bake Off. We're absolutely obsessed by food. We just somehow don't want to cook it ourselves. The proliferation of TV cooking programmes, especially since the 1990s, have made people even more disengaged from cooking. They feel, I can't do this. Given the number of cookery shows on the box these days, you would think that we spend most of our time in the kitchen rustling up delicious home-cooked pies, cakes and stews or whatever. But the fact is, only one in six of us cook from scratch every night. So the question is, why do the rest of us spend so much time slouched in front of the TV with a ready meal or a takeaway or whatever, when we could be whipping up something really interesting in the kitchen instead? Well, there seems to be three key arguments why this is the case. There's cost, you have to spend more money to buy raw ingredients. There's time, it takes too long to cook from scratch. But first, the big one, skills. Many of us just can't cook. Healthy eating and cooking from scratch might be the fundamentals of a healthy diet, but the skills and the knowledge to put that together day in, day out, is something that you have to be taught and shown how to do. Grandparents not cooking meant that parents never got to see how food is made, and now their children, we've got three generations of people that have no idea how to put a basic meal on the table, and that's a problem. And that's exactly what happened here at the Harris household in Kent. My mum wasn't one for a lot of home cooking or cooking from scratch, and it kind of phases me, it kind of scares me. My cooking skills are zilch. Mum Mia helps run her husband Matt's carpentry business, and they have three hungry young boys, aged between 10 and 17. The meals eaten in this house are chicken nuggets. My children will only eat fries to go. Are you disappointed, boys, in my culinary skills? Yeah. What do you mean is it's not cooked very nice? No, sometimes it's burn and crunchy. Oh, my God. I'm sure we've all got a radiation glow around us from our microwave, because it's used so much, but it's on all the time. Mum can't cook that much, because probably she's never been taught, and she don't really do it around the house anyway. 13-year-old football man Zach may enjoy his diet of ready meals, but recently he's shown an interest in expanding his knowledge of food and learning a new set of skills, that is, cooking from scratch. Zach's a very, very energetic, energetic boy. He's just turned 13, and he actually is one in the house that has asked me pretty much nine times out of ten if he can cook. He would love to be able to cook. Well, we thought we'd try and help, so we've taken Zach, along with five other youngsters, to meet someone who believes they should already know how to prepare simple dinners. Top chef Aldo Zilli was taught to cook by his mother at the age of eight. He says it's a vital skill, and starting early is critical. Why do you think it's so important for young people to learn how to cook? I think uh, cooking is a way of life and it's crucially important when you grow up because if you can cook from scratch, you can go to markets, you can pass it on to your kids. I think it's a great skill to learn. 